Very good from uh, Top Notch TV. Another session of demystifying biology concepts. Your favorite living organism, Bernard Sa Osoro. Today, we want to understand one of the ways our body protects itself from pathogens, entry of germs into our body, and that is the blood clotting process. Normally, we usually associate blood clotting with the formation of a dry scab on your skin once it has been injured. So the objective of this brief session is to understand reactions or what events take place for that dry scab to form on the surface of your skin, that part that has been injured. To start, let us mention something very important, that there are three key proteins in our blood that play a role in the blood clotting process. One is heparin, H-E-P-A-R-I-N. That is a protein that is an anti-clotting factor, which means in the presence of heparin, clotting cannot take place. Two, prothrombin, which is an inactive form of an enzyme, prothrombin. The third protein that has a significant role in the blood clotting process is fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is a soluble protein present in our blood. Now, We have mentioned that blood clotting takes place on that part of the skin that has been injured. And not just injured, but blood has oozed out. So for us to understand the blood clotting process, let us imagine a blood vessel that has been injured. Due to one reason or the other, it can be an accident, it can be deliberate, or by accident. If this blood vessel has been injured, the blood is exposed to the atmosphere. Of all the components present in the blood, we have the three types of cells, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. The platelets are the cells responsible for the blood clotting process. How? In this injured blood, the exposed platelets will rupture. Once they rupture, the platelets, ruptured platelets, release an enzyme that is known as thromboplastin. Thromboplastin enzyme has two roles. The first role of thromboplastin is to neutralize the protein heparin. Remember, heparin is an anti-clotting factor. In its presence, while it is active, it prevents any clotting from occurring. So the first role of thromboplastin is to neutralize, to cancel out the role of heparin. The second role of thromboplastin enzyme as represented in our small flowchart is to neutralize, not neutralize, that one has been captured, is to activate the prothrombin. Activating prothrombin is converting the prothrombin from its inactive form to an active form that is called thrombin. Just remember, like during the digestion process, when we have inactive pepsinogen being activated to pepsin. The same way, in the blood clotting, 
active from inactive from prothrombin is activated to an active form thrombin enzyme this is the responsibility of thromboplastin and for that to take place it requires the presence of calcium ions what is then the role of this thrombin that is an active enzyme that is where fibrinogen comes in also fibrinogen is the soluble protein thrombin as an active enzyme it is role it is to convert fibrinogen from a soluble form to an insoluble form which is known as fibrin and the moment you talk of fibrins talk of or have in mind fibers the fibrins are insoluble they appear like fibers and these fibers form like a mesh on the injured part of that blood vessel once you have the meshwork of fibers forming that is now the insoluble fibrin that meshwork of fibers traps the blood cells the main blood cells of course that are abundant in blood are the red blood cells in trapping the red blood cells it forms like a solid structure substance on the injured part and that is now what forms a clot so for the formation of a clot it involves platelets rupturing the rupture to release thromboplastin enzyme which neutralizes heparin the anti clotting factor the thromboplastin enzyme also activates inactive prothrombin which is an a, a protein present in the blood to an active form which is thrombin process that requires calcium ions the active thrombin then converts soluble fibrinogen to an insoluble form which is fibrin the fibrins being insoluble forms a meshwork of fibers which trap the red blood cells to form a solid clot when the clot dries it forms now a dry scab this dry scab prevents excess loss of and 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 loss of blood but it also plays a protective role because it prevents entry of pathogens and germs into the body through the injured damaged part that is how blood clotting takes place which means blood clotting under normal circumstances usually cannot take place unless the blood vessel is injured why can't blood clotting take place inside the closed blood vessel because one the presence of heparin which we said is an anti clotting factor number 2 the enzyme responsible for activation of prothrombin to thrombin which is thromboplastin enzyme is only released by platelets once they rupture that is when they are exposed and therefore in closed blood vessels prothrombin is still in its inactive form those two reasons are why blood clotting does not take place within inside closed vessels presence of heparin and the clotting factor which is prothrombin is inactive As usual guys it has been very nice very enriching interacting with you as always 
kindly remember as always to subscribe to our enriching channel the ocean of knowledge our youtube channel the top notch online tv series and we are a community of interactive living organisms therefore if you have a comment a question point to add always you are free to type your comment in our comment section feel welcome we treasure you as always top notch guys the ocean of knowledge bye bye